Well, I have no idea what was happening there because I couldn't see anything on my screen at all. Can you see me, guys? You can? Oh, that's good because I can't see a damn thing here. Um, so, oh, it is a pilot, isn't it? Um, and now I can see two people, but I still can't see myself. What about the rest of you? I can see everyone. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. And Hugh, are you with us? Yes, uh, yeah, okay, right, okay. I think we're all there now. Well, what, how stressful is this? Well, it is a pilot after all. So anyway, um, to everybody out there, um, welcome to this, the first, as you can probably gather, the first of the um, Talking Songs in the Round. The principle of it is that um, in the round comes something that they do in Nashville where you have four people or five people and they just all sit around, they all do a song and they all chat about it. And um, it's quite a nice idea. So I thought I'd have a, a go at trying to organise one online. And so with me today, I have um, on the top right hand there, <laughs> Mr. Hugh Plaza. How are you doing, Hugh? Are you, you all right? Good to see you. Thank yeah, you. round of applause for Hugh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bottom left, we've got Phil Mellon, Black Sheep Lad. How are you doing, Phil? Um, very well, thanks. Good, good. And down the bottom right is Lefty. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, we should have had Adrian Truman with us as well, but he's not well, unfortunately. So um, get well soon, Adrian, and uh, we shall see you shortly, hopefully. So um, I think we're going to kick off with Hugh, aren't we, Hugh? So um, take it away. Everybody's going to have... Uh, 15 minutes or so to to sing a couple of songs and, and to do a bit of chatting so uh, and tell us about those songs so first up mr hugh blaza thank you very much lovely to be here roland and um, nice to see everybody who's tuned in um Pleasure. yeah um so this first song i'm going to do is called once the pilot and um i wrote it many years ago um fiddling around in open d tuning for the guitar players out there um Wants to buy this. It's a song about coming home, really, um, from travelling and um, from flying, from sailing. Um, I can talk about it better afterwards. Let me play the damn song. Ink black, purple. Bringing my boat home by starlight And will break us, take us on the next high tide Man is the night since I sat by your side I love the ocean, feel emotion, I love the water as I roll. And tonight, I'm coming, I'm bringing my boat home. I'm coming home. Silence from my hand. I fell through clouds, it was a tug of silk that held me there. Drifting across fields in my suspension. Oh, let them break off, I love to take off. Love the cloud into the sun And tonight I'm flying I'm flying my plane home 
I'm a restless sailor on a raging sea. Aviator in turbulent skies. Keep your heart open to me. I'll keep my eyes for your eyes. Spinning horizons, endless days, broken patterns of sleep. Remember that praise is on the beat of a wind. Just to say, I'm flying, I'm flying your way. I love the ocean, feel the motion, I feel all the rays I roam. But tonight, I'm coming, I'm bringing my boat home. Yeah. Love that. I love the, 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 the rhyme in there about motion and emotion. Ocean and motion, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I caught it. <laughs> the other thing I noticed at that part of the song is that you, you, your right hand technique um, reminded me a bit of, of John Martin. Uh, yeah, well, one of the very, very, I've, I've played May You Never since I was, well, since I first heard it. As soon as I heard May You Never, I had to learn how to play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, it, it used to be when, when I was at university, it was the matter of um, they wouldn't let me drive, my mates wouldn't let me drive home unless I could actually play in Never. May you never on a guitar before I could get in the car. And that was my sort of my breathalyzer tune. But yeah, yeah big yeah. fan of John Martin. So yeah. tell us a bit about the song. Yeah, well, as I say, it's um, it's like all it's like I, I don't I don't write in a very methodical way. I sort of wait for stuff to come in. Mm -hmm. I've got a German idea. It can take anything between half an hour and five years to work into a song. <laughs> Um, and this one, this one sort of evolved over a longer period of time, probably not five years, but over a longer period of time. Um, but I just love the, um, I mean, this is blowing my own trumpet, but I just love the, the chord sequence. Of yeah. the, um, sort of major seventy things. So yeah, yeah. I don't know whether you guys find this, but when I'm playing in open tune, I have a clue what chord I'm playing. <laughs> um, I kind of know what key it's in, but I don't know what chord. In fact, I've recorded this with... Um, with guitars mm. in, in open tuning, conventional, sorry, standard conventional tuning. Yeah. And working out what the calls were so I could actually play along with it seemed a bit of a challenge. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so it's a sort of combination of, um, it's a combination of coming home, being out mm. there as well and then coming home. But the, the once a pilot bit is, it sort of slips in a bit of reincarnation, you know, once I was a pilot and I, and I got blown out of the sky and ended up falling through Clouds in the back with a parachute to hold me, which is the tug of silk. You know, nice you, when the parachute opens. <laughs> yeah. enough, I've seen enough films to know that when the parachute <laughs> opens, it tugs you up into the back up into the air, it feels like. It. So, yes, I have to say it's not, not anything. Go on, I, I was thinking the um, bringing the boat home is a lovely metaphor for a listener because you can take it in many ways. You know, bringing the boat home can can mean an awful lot of things. You know, mm. so it, it sort of opens up nice thoughts. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting how people interpret songs. Um, there's another song I, I, I put on YouTube, and um, one of our group, Pat Orchard, who or mm. Pat Orchard band, as we know, what um, he, he he wrote a comment on it, which I hadn't thought of it's in terms of describing the song. What it made me think was completely different from how I always interpreted the song. And that's great. You know? mm. Bob Dylan said, the song can mean what you want it to mean. It's entirely up to you. The only, the only thing I, I've noticed is that um, I, I've posted quite a few songs and all the comments, without exception, somebody's mentioned alcohol in them <laughs> and said, I, I could happily be sitting with a glass of bourbon listening to this, or I could do with a double whiskey while so Now, I'm not sure whether that's, they require that state of mind to actually put up with it. I don't know, but I don't think so. I think it's to do with the seediness of my plots. <laughs> well, it's a, 
whatever floats your boat. You know? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do another tune for us in here? Oh right. I'm sorry. You're sticking with me. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can, we can do as you want. We can we can go round. We can do go round if you like. Would that suit people better? I'm I'm happy to do to do that if, if everybody's happy for to hear me. Work with me. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's go for that then. That was the original plan. But we, we're flexible people. So um. Conveniently sticking in D, so I don't have to retune my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's in a different key, so they, they, anyway, I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to try and retune it because it's the most boring thing on the telly is um, watching people tune their guitars. But this was um, the reason I chose this song after the one I've just sung was because um, it, it, it carries over, not deliberately, but it, it carries over um, similar um, imagery from from the song I've just sung. Um, um, and it's also about travelling, um, but instead of coming home, this one's more about travelling in search of something. Um, you know what? Um, you don't know what. And um, part of my um, part of my activities until lockdown were playing in a, a three-piece country and western trio called the Prairie Clans. And we've done loads of covers. I mean, we've we, we just released our first album, um, uh, finished our first album when lockdown happened. And um, they were all covers, um, some great songs, Hank Williams, um, oh, Merle Haggard, you know it. Um, and, and then we decided we'd, we'd try and write some songs of our own. And this was one that I wrote in slight, slightly in the, in the country um, style. Um, so what's this called? Oh, yeah, this one's called Eyes Across the Room. And that was inspired by listening to a couple of friends talking about how they met their um, other halves and, uh, and how often it's the eyes across the room, which, um, which, you, which is the first thing you, you see and you realise that, you're drawn to each other through that. So um, so I haven't played this for a long time, so it may be a bit ropey, but let me give it my best shot. <laughs> <laughs> Out on the highway in Sikandar, the escape, seeing to my radio, to keep me awake Some kind of haven With freedom suspended The hum of my engine The journey ain't ended I'm just driving Eyes across the room Hearts in the wind just an encounter, or maybe I found her eyes across the room. Words to deliver, maybe for me. A message to give her, what can I give her? No land in sight. The keys are no sea birds passing in flight. Steer by the stars, go by the wind. Any old heart is fine and I'm just sailing. Eyes across the room, hearts in the wind, just an encounter, or maybe I found her. Eyes across the room, words to deliver, maybe from you, a message to give her. What can I give up? Nothing I do seems to make any sense. Triumph of hope or experience. Traveling latitudes, thinking I'm free. I'm in for mercy. The moment I see Eyes across the room 
what's in the wind Just a lot of girl But maybe I found her Eyes across the room Words to deliver Baby from me A message to give her What can I give her? Yeah. Thank you. Eyes. Yeah. The um, I, th I think actually didn't Bowie write in one song about eyes at the lights? So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, can you tell us more anything about that one? That. Uh, well, I, I said most of it in, in the intro, I guess. Really, it's um, yeah, it's a sort of um, a combination of more writing to to order. You know, we 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 wanted to sort of start the songs in the style of country. Um, yeah. And um and sort of picking up all that vernacular really too. Mm. To see what um, see what there was. I mean, I'm a sucker for a six eight. Um, <laughs> I think um, uh, a, a good thing about that kind of song is it lends itself to a band situation very well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you can hear the metal steel, uh, can't you? And um, yeah, 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 yeah. And and works works solo. You know, that's uh, there's a lot of um, acoustic music. Not just, I think some of the stuff that I do, it just doesn't lend itself to um, more instruments, you know. Mm. Um, it need a kind of total rearrange. Yeah. I think if you're going to write for a sort of band kind of thing, um, it's you have to bear those things in mind. That, mm. you know, well, it's, it's, it's sort of the simplicity, thing. isn't it? You know, yeah. it's yeah. like, um, yeah. I don't and know. And it's, it's leaving the space in there for other things to to fill you know yeah 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 absolutely yeah i'm particularly particularly bass lines and things i've noticed that stuff that i've um uh, written where it's got a not a sort of walking bass line in it but a, a bass line that follows the chord sequence quite precisely um is then you play that with a bass player and you can see the bass player thinking i wish he'd shut up and stop playing that bit because yeah, well, it's not, it's not necessary, you know. That's really interesting. I, I mean, I, I listened to an interview with James Taylor, uh, mm. and James Taylor's bass player, um, mm. Jimmy Johnson, who is a fantastic. I mean, between them, James Taylor is one of the best acoustic guitarists ever. He is just mm. stupendous and brilliant. Um, but then Jimmy Johnson is a fantastic bass player as well. In fact, he's mm. James musical musical director. He he does all the arrangements. Mm. And 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 James and and Jimmy was saying how difficult it is to work out. The baseline, because yeah. James is playing the, the whole thing. It's like an orchestra in his right hand. Mm. And, and but the way they meld is 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 fantastic. Yeah, I don't know if if any of you have ever played played in a big band. I played in a big band for, for for some years, and every now and then we'd have a depth piano player would come in, and it would be a depth who was used to accompanying vocalists, but just on their own. Mm. So you'd suddenly find that the f the sound was like full of piano. Yeah. You know, you, you couldn't, you know, the, the, the other 23 members of the band didn't really count very much. Whereas the guy who was our regular player left spaces all the time, you know, that, you know, I could look around and it looked like he was asleep, you know, but that's all it needed was, was just the right thing in the right place. Well, you say, I, sorry, you say you played in a big band. Um, one, yeah. one of the gigs I ever went to was to see Count Basie's band in one of oh. the And I sat as close as I am to his computer screen. That close to, to count basic. You're and right. That. Yeah. <laughs> sort of mayhem was going on around it. Yeah. Yeah. All carefully written mayhem. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. The, the the great thing about Basie was that the longest standing member of his band was Freddie Green. Oh, okay. uh, uh, an amplifier. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing is that the the um, the famous Ian Dury song. Hit me with your rhythm stick. Actually, it was dedicated to uh, Freddie Green because he used to have a walking stick, and if the drummer speeded up, he'd whack him with it. I didn't know that. What a great! <laughs> it's a great story. Yeah, what a 
a great story. I love it, yeah. Because um, he was in charge of the rhythm section. And I was told this story when I I, I joined a big band. Um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to get the whacking or not. But, um, yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, sh- shall, I, shall I do one now and then, then, then Phil? Yeah, is that cool? That's good. Are we all right with that? Okay. Um, I'm go- the two I'm going to do. I'll do. The- I'll do the other one after after Phil's done his bit. Um, this was a, a story that a, a friend of mine told me about a um, something that happened to him when he went to, to a friend's wedding, and he met this woman, American woman, and um, they had a. Well, it depends. You can either call it a one-night stand or you can call it a romantic interlude, depending on your state of mind as you see it. Um, but the whole point of it was was it was something that was very intense but lasted less than 24 hours. And he told me this story. So, um, um, so I thought I'll put it in a song. So I was quite intrigued by it. So this is called uh, We Were Lovers. of a friend met her purely by chance loved the way she acted loved the way she danced the sweet so slow and gentle taking care with every move feeling the music going with the groove we were lovers much more than friends On the morning, we were strangers again. Oh, standing looking lonely, not knowing which way to go. Were we looking for love or adventure? We didn't exactly know. Sometimes we look for friendship, hoping for something good. Not sure if we'd recognize it, not knowing if we could. We were lovers, much more than friends. Come the morning, we were strangers again. The next day it was over. Like waking from a dream Not sure if it had happened Not sure if it was real We came from different stories But we both went a different way It was never ever meant to last It was just an amazing day We were lovers Much more than friends On the morning, we were strangers again. We were strangers again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, over to you, Phil. Thanks, Roland. Um, so um, I'm going to play a couple of songs on the baritone ukulele, which is where I tend to do most of my writing. Um, mm. I was a drummer way before I was a guitarist, and I think I still bring a certain rhythmic quality to the way I play stuff. Um, and so sometimes stuff translates from this to the guitar, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, um, this first song uh, I wrote probably nearly a year ago now. It's called Wintering. Um um, I think as I talked to you before, Ryan, I was ill with COVID yeah. and then went on to have long COVID. Um, so I was ill for quite a long time, still still not 100%. Um, and I read a book by an author called Catherine May called Wintering. Um, and she, I think, had had ME, um, was out of uh, work for quite a long time. But 
she kind of spun it in a positive way and said, you know, having time out from the rat race, having time out from the, the busyness of a working life um, had given her time to reflect and think about what was really important. Um, and so I sort of wrote this song inspired by that. Um, and I, I have sent it to her, actually, and she quite liked it. So uh, oh, nice. hopefully it wasn't too far away from the spirit of what she was trying to say. But it's just that idea of, I suppose we think of illness and, and, and downtime as a bad thing, but actually it can have positive sides to it. So this is wintry. Settle down into the comforting depths of your hinterland. Traverse the coldest recesses of your heart and mind. Nestle inside, down where you hide all the burgeoning frost of your doubt. Curl up so small in a comforting bowl, you are wintering. See all the icicles hanging down, frosty and menacing. Formed of the ice of the bad stuff that happened before. as they melt all that you felt coming back to you frozen and clear so till they're gone flying south like a swan you are wintering you are wintering sleeping alone in the daytime wondering when it will end from the frost with the time that you lost you are wintering wrapping yourself in the protective trappings of winter time keeping the worldly temptations of warmth far at bay Forget the sun till your wintering's done It will greet you again in the springtime Lie dormant and still through the seasonal chill You are wintering You are wintering Sleeping alone in the daytime Wondering when it will end Rise from the frost with the time that you lost. You are wintering. You are wintering. You are wintering, 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 wintering. All that winters is not cold. All that winters is not cold. All that winters is not cold. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting that the um, the the whole COVID thing, how it's affected people in terms of of songwriting. Because I know that what you've said to me before, Phil, that you've you've done a, as a consequence of what happened to you, you've actually done a lot of writing. Yeah. Um. I've always written songs and I've always played, but I suppose in the last 10 years that I've become less and less a regular part of my life, hmm. uh, just through busyness with work, young family, hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I, I hadn't written anything of any consequence probably for five years, I would say. Messed around with things, but not, not turned anything into songs. But in, in the period of illness, just all of a sudden, inspired by illness, thoughts of mortality, etc um I, I started writing again and, and and i suppose in the last year i've probably written 20 songs um you know which for me is probably the most prolific i've been um mm. which has been great um you know, a, a positive consequence of, of, mm. of a negative thing yeah what what about you Hugh and lefty what about you have you how's your productivity gone Ooh, up and down um I've, um <laughs> The downside is um, I'm, I'm very prone to get overly introspective mm. and overthink things. And uh, during COVID, I've, I've had a lot of thinking. <laughs> and some of the songs <laughs> that have, have come out, although I'm quite pleased with them, they're kind of um, 
a sit quietly album track type song rather than mm. um, something up and happy. Mm. And one of the things um, I've hosted quite a few open mics in my time, mm. and um, very often they can turn into. Um, I don't mean, mean this in a bad way. It's only a bit into a bit of a dirge because everyone's got so much to give. Angst. Of emotional things that have gone mm. on in their life, you know, and, and they're, these songs are really, really important to me. And God, they're so depressing. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> not. I don't mean that in a negative way. You know, no, I know but, exactly but, what you mean. Yeah. And, what about uh, when someone comes along and sings a comedy song? Um, the whole room lights up because of it, you know? And yeah. um, so Relief. I get very conscious of being overly um, um, sad, for one of <laughs> you know? And I think um, sometimes middle of the road or something happy mm. is, is, is a good thing to do, especially in mm. public, you know? Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah. People respond more to it. Um, yeah. in a in a in a nice way, you know. Yeah. Rather what about you, Hugh? Do you feel the wrists? Yeah. Uh, oh, what about you, Hugh? How do you get on with it? Yeah, you well, on? I, I think left, I'm I'm entirely with Lefty on that. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not a terribly prolific songwriter. In fact, a lot of the time I've spent over the last few months has been working out Garage Band and have to record into it, um, <laughs> which has been a real sort of. Um, Trial, trial and error, certainly, but also um, I, I suspect it's quite limiting, actually, um, mm. sonically limited, but it's, it's very good for learning the sort of basic techniques. Yeah. Mm. I spend a lot of time doing that, but, um, but, but yeah, it's kind of, cause I, most of the songs I write are fairly miserable and, and reflective, um, <laughs> but, um, except for the one I submitted um, for the competition, which didn't get past the first post, but um, maybe I should have put a miserable one in on um, one, one thing I'd, I'd, I'd like to say, Phil, um, in regard to instrumentation, one of the wonderful things, I, I was very late discovering this, in a four-stringed instrument like, say, um, a uke or a tenor guitar or banjo, is that when you play um, um, augmented chords with seven nines or eleven and mm. all that, they stand out a mile. They're beautiful. It's really... You get a really kind of um, you can you can change around a, a chord and mm. it sounds very different than when you play it on a six string guitar where you're doubling up a lot of notes mm -hmm. and uh, they, um, it's great that that little sequence you're going that yeah I thought the bridge, um, the bridge to the chorus was lovely you know you could always hear the strings coming in on that bridge and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, th I think I, that's a good point, Lefty, because it it does have quite. Because I, I, I was sitting. Because I'm one of the things I've been thinking about over the, over the last year and a half, whatever it is, of of actually trying a, a new instrument and you know from scratch. And yeah, I hadn't realised, but I'm sure you're right, Lefty. That there is that thing that they they do stand out. Yeah, um, yeah. Because you're whatever not whatever you do, do not go anywhere near a bloody violin. <laughs> 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 yeah, I shared a house with a guy at university for a, a, one of the guys who moved in who was learning the violin at the age of 19 and he was clueless and we had to ask him to leave or give up and it was, it was just because because at least at least if you've got a guitar and it's in tune when you pl when you put your finger down in the right place it's probably going to be the right note yeah. but with, the vi with the violin there's no guarantee is there really it's, no, no yeah yeah I'm so, sorry uh, I play slide guitar. Well, I try to play the slide guitar. All right. One of my great heroes, one of the favourite bands ever was Little Feet. Lovell George. Yeah, oh, God, yes. Lovell George is just... Are we, are we brothers, Hugh? <laughs> 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 Little but, Feet. I mean, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm doing... Somebody put a post on Talent is Timeless to say, do you, does anybody ever do covers? Mm. And, um, and um, I don't know whether we've all clocked Karen Bates and her song, The Child of Joe O'Connor, which... Um, which no. I, should be the winner. It's just she is she, her voice is just incredible, and she writes these really, really beautiful, quirky songs. And um, and um, so I bought her album off. Um, mm. one, of, <coughs> one of one of the songs is the one I've chosen to cover. Mm. And just I just heard slide guitar. So mm. yesterday I spent trying to work out a slide guitar part. 
And it goes back to your violin point. It's intonation. Hearing, because yeah. you, you can put your slide above the fret, but it still doesn't necessarily sound right. Yeah. You watch slide guitar player. In fact, I was watching Ray Cooder last night. Mm. The, vibrat the vibrato that you... We are related, Hugh. We are related. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I suspect we're of an age, Robin. <laughs> there may be that as well. But I, now thinking about it, because when I, I heard a track of yours, and I remember saying, saying to my wife, I said, because... We, uh, Little Feet is, is one, one of the top ones on our on our Spotify playlist without any shadow of doubt because it's um, and um, I said to her it was it was it, it had that sort of Little Feet groove to it I'm very something very, very much influenced by Little Feet yeah 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 it's 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 wonderful stuff okay back back to Philip uh, so in response to Lefty's comments I'll, I'll do a slightly comic song um <laughs> This, this is another one which was written when ill, um, and I was telling Roland before, and I think Lefty, you were, you were there when we were talking about this, um, that when I was really ill, I was most ill in the evenings, so um, I, my temperature would shoot up, my breathing would be really difficult sort of late at night, so there was absolutely no point in trying to go to bed at a normal time, because I would just lie there and toss and turn. Um, so we spent a lot of time, me and my wife, just sitting um, chatting, but also watching um, TV, and we started watching The Walking Dead, um, which we'd never watched before, but got really into it, um, sort of absorbed in the world of it. Um, but it's a zombie thing, and, and like most zombie things, the, the, the tension is always when a loved one gets bitten is beginning to turn into a zombie. What do you then do? Do you, you know, do you kill your, your wife or husband or, or whoever it is or cast them out? What do you do? And I was just in my slightly fevered state musing on that. And, you know, what would I do if Claire, my wife, was bitten and, and was turning before my eyes into a zombie? So the song is about that. It's it, it's it's it is comic, but it's also a love song, really. And it's it's kind of basically saying, even if you were a zombie, I'd still love you. Um, it's called Zombie Romance. Yeah, it's a cracker. Yeah, the video. Go on, sorry. The video on I, I saw this and I watched okay. it. Enjoyed it, my kids and everything. The Lego, Lego video, it's fantastic. Love it. Yeah, my, my niece, Kezi, um, who's in her mid twenties now. Although I always think of her probably as being eight, but she she is in her <laughs> mid twenties um, and does loads of Lego stuff. And my son just said to me, uh, Charlie, when I was doing it, I was saying we ought to do a video for this. And he said, why not get Kezi to do a, a stop go animation Lego mm. video, which was a brilliant idea. Although it does mean that I had to order some Lego zombies off eBay, which probably somewhere marks me down in some. Uh, <laughs> government government record, but, but they do exist. Anyway. Excellent. <laughs> right, zombie romance. If by chance a global pandemic should rise, spreading germs and disease through the world's lonely skies, and the main consequence is the one that we dread, the millions of people become the undead And I want you to know from the core of my heart That if worrying symptoms cause something to start And you change to a strange sort of humanoid shell I'll continue to love you and still treat you well For if you're just snarling and biting at me I'll assume that you're doing it affectionately And we'll still carry on in our weird jerky dance As we live out our dreams in a zombie romance I know there'll be changes that we'll have to make You'll prefer to eat people instead of fruitcake and at bedtime I know that I can't kiss your head And you'll have to be strapped to your side of the bed But as daylight fades and you gibber and moan I'll soon make you quiet with someone's ankle bone And you'll chew and you'll slobber to your heart's content While I sleep by your side in a snug tomb and tent for if you're just snarling and biting at me I'll assume that you're doing it affectionately And we'll still carry on in our weird jerky dance As we live out our dreams in a zombie romance There 
There are sure to be downsides to the change you've been through. Like I might not feel safe when I go to the loo. But I'm willing for us to prepare for the risk. And I'll perch on the bog with a knife in my fist. Just in case you are some other zombified friend Wants to chew on me while I sit over the U-bend But I promised to love you through thick and through thin And I will till your teeth bite off all of my skin <laughs> Or if you're just snarling, biting at me I'll assume that you're doing it affectionately and we'll still carry on in our weird jerky dance As we live out our dreams in a zombie romance For if you're just snarling and biting at me I'll assume that you're doing it affectionately And we'll twirl and we'll twirl through our weird jerky dance As we live out our dreams in a zombie romance yeah. Great song. Excellent. Excellent you. song. You've got some brilliant rhymes in there. Yeah. <laughs> My grandkids love it. Oh, that's great to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we all do, but they do as well. They're only seven, six. There's <laughs> also that one lovely contrast in where you've got such a light, lovely you going on, and then this yeah. really kind of dark lyric behind it, you know. It was, it <laughs> have, you seen, have, have you all seen the video? The video's great, it goes with it. If you go on um, YouTube um, and, and just Google Black Sheep Lab Zombie Romance, there's, there's a great video, it goes with it, it's on my niece. Uh, right. painstaking, painstakingly made a, a, a Lego stop go animation video that follows the the story of the song basically, um, but it's, it, it is brilliant. Um, Excellent. And that's that's out as a single at the moment as well, um, which is is getting a little bit of airplay and stuff, which is nice. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it's it's oh, Hugh. I was just saying when you say it's out as a single, Phil, what do, what do you mean? So in this. In this new digital world, it's it's across <laughs> all the streaming places. So it's on Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, etc. You can uh, you can buy it or just listen to it um, in all of those places. So how do you get it there? So in my case, um, I'm now on a, an indie record label called Wobbly Music, who are based up in Accrington, um, and they have got a distributor that pushes it out. But if you want to do it yourself, if you've got a SoundCloud account. Um, you can push stuff out from there. If you buy the SoundCloud Pro, which I think is about £7 a month, um, right. you can then push stuff out to all the uh, streaming places from there if you want to. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Or you can do it through TuneCore or DistroKid. Um, I, I, th I think probably Sound... Because Sound, when, I, when I started doing it, SoundCloud wasn't wasn't offering that service. I think that sounds like a better deal, to be honest. I think it's a relatively recent development. And when before I got signed for the record label back in the autumn, that's how I was pushing all my stuff out. Mm. Um, but I was, I was doing it in a uh, quite haphazard... Oh, I've written something. I've recorded it. Let's push it out, um, which wasn't very <laughs> strategic particularly. So um, stuff is a bit more spaced out now. But, yeah. So, so the SoundCloud Pro, which I think I think it's seven or seven ninety nine a month, um, gives you the ability to then um, yeah. push push stuff out commercially. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, okay, then um, shall I do my one song and then you can finish off for, for your session, Lefty? Is that all right? Certainly. Um, this is um, this is uh, as I say that this is a follow up to the, um, the the previous song, in the sense that I kind of. I quite like this idea. So, so then I, I thought, well, what happens to them in the future? I mean, in reality, nothing happened to them in the future. Um, she went back to the States and he stayed here. Um, so I just tried to imagine what happened. And I kind of imagined that they actually got together again um, whilst she was already in a, a different relationship and they had um, another evening of passion. And... Um, and he he has a sort of well, a regret about it, but not a regret about it. And, you know, he's kind of confused about it, really. 
Uh, and this is called And I Knew In That Moment. Sometimes I think too much I look too hard and I dig too deep Can't get you out of my mind Can't get no peace No, I can't forget you No, many Many years have passed I can still see your smile I can still hear that laugh And I knew in that moment I knew that's all it could ever be And I knew in that moment that the world was only you and me I had to let you go because I knew it wasn't right I let you walk out that door didn't even put up a fight Sad or glad that it happened Either way it was never meant to be I thought I'd won the big prize that night But in the end the loser who was me And I knew in that moment I knew that's all it could ever be And I knew in that moment The world was only you and me but Ten, twenty years later The memory still lingers gone how can something that felt so right be possibly be looked at as being so wrong? And I knew in that moment, I knew that's all it could ever be. And I knew in that moment that the world was only you and me yes and I knew in that moment I knew that's all it could ever be and I knew in that moment that the world was only you and me Thank you. Nice one. Thank yeah. you. I, I, I was just thinking, Lefty, as you uh, said before about <laughs> writing songs and, and finding that the difference between writing happy songs and writing sad songs. And I think I would have to admit that I find writing sad songs much easier. Very much so. Very much so. Um, you know? Yeah. A good, a good upbeat song. That, yeah, you know, the kind of thing when you're a teenager and you're going to go mm. out for a Friday night. Mm. And you'd have your cassette player or something. You'd put something on that was, you know, that got you going. Mm. And, uh, it was a lovely feeling, the anticipation, you know. Yeah. And all of your life before you and you were the days when we were indestructible, you know, <laughs> uh, before reality sets in. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like I like a song with, with energy, but it, it's, it's not easy to write. I don't know. No, think. it's not. It's uh, yeah, definitely difficult one that. Um, 
Yeah, and the the, the, other, the other thing about the, the reason I picked those two is the fact that there is a story to it. And um, because, I mean, the, the, the music I do, is it sort of comes from the blues originally, although there's lots of jazzy bits. It's, it's very contaminated with other sorts of stuff. But it, essentially, the blues is, 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 not, is never portrayed as a happy piece of music. Yeah. So, um, and, and I remember hearing... Uh, or reading an interview with Robert Cray, and he said the way he writes blues is he, he has an alter ego. He imagines a, a different guy in a different circumstance, in a different town, in a different city, and that's that's his alter ego by which he writes the songs. I think that's, that's one of the major components for being a songwriter, is hmm. having empathy. So you can do that. You can put mm. yourself in someone else's shoes, even if only briefly and in a, mm. in a, a small way. And um, that's, that, that's, that for me is kind of uh, food and drink for my thought processes, you know. Mm. And even walking down a street and you, you see someone, it might be an old lady with a couple of bags of shopping, mm. and you glance at her for about two seconds. And that mm. can fill your head for days. Mm. on her circumstances and what's going on and what's it like, mm. you know, being where she is. And um, I think that's essential for a songwriter. Well, as you yeah, said that, uh, the first thing that sprang to mind was Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, well, what an amazing song. Yeah. And yeah. what an amazing inspiration. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I quite, quite agree. But going back to Karen, if you haven't checked Karen out, you really must. Mm. Um, song that she wrote, The Child of Joe O'Connor, is a sort of two-minute thing about um, a description of somebody else putting herself in other people's shoes, exactly what you're saying. Mm. But it really harks back to Eleanor Rigby. Mm. Um, yeah. one, of the, one, of my, one of my heroes is Tom Waits, because he, oh. probably, <laughs> he actually... We're lives, all related. <laughs> yeah, lives his characters. He actually yeah. lives them, you know, and it makes it so... It's like a good actor. Mm. Makes it believable. Well, you know? I don't know whether it's true, but there, there is a story. He always had a bottle of whiskey, you know, as he on his piano when he was <laughs> gigs, but apparently it was just tea. Oh, right. Part of his yeah, I've been drinking. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, exactly. But he, was, he wasn't as pissed as he, as he led people to believe. I think he probably said <laughs> As opposed to Dave Allen, who was. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lefty, what have we got for us, mate? Camembert Electric. Um, what have I got? I've got uh, a couple of songs. That's what I've got. Um, Good starting some point. People might might argue that point. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, the first one is it's kind of about mortality and money and uh, greed, and it's um, it was, it's an attempt at. Uh, at folk, I suppose, in a way. Uh, I'm not naturally um, someone who sits in one genre. Um, hmm. I love them all. And a wonderful thing you just said, Roland, was your songs are contaminated from all over the place. And <laughs> I, 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 I like I that. I like the eclectic nature of, of something. Mm. I couldn't just sit in one genre. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I, want, I want to... One of the beauty, beautiful things in music is when fusion happens. I mean, you talk about Little Feet. I saw them in Manchester at the Warner Brothers tour. Right. With uh, uh, Mont Montrose and... Um, yeah. Doobie Brothers. Doobies and all that, yeah. yeah. And um, that was a hell of an eclectic mix, you know. Yeah. And... Um, you had Grand Central uh, Station on that tour as well, I think, didn't they? Tower of Power. Tower, Tower of Power. Power, yeah. Tower of Power, yeah. And just um, mind blowing, and and I love I love the fusion thing. I love mm. uh, I love the uh, the rhythms of the Latin music, mm. uh, the African music, and Indian music. Mm. And when that fuses together, probably in in a jazz way, mm. um, it's I just find it utterly adorable. Like things that uh, Bella Fleck, yeah, does, you know. Absolutely. The thing, thing I was going to say that is that the difficulty is that, and, and we all do it. I mean, if I meet somebody and they say, oh, yeah, I'm a musician, I will automatically say, what sort of music do you play? And I know full well that they're not going to have a clear answer on it. 
because I know when people ask me, I kind of end up, and the, the contaminated thing came from, I, I, when we lived in Italy, there was a festival um, in Umbria, and it was called the um, Urban Contamination um, and it was all sorts of different art forms as well. And I thought, oh, I like that. I'm going to pinch that. So I, I put on on my bit of the program that I was playing contaminated blues. But it is it, but it is one of those things, you know, we we expect that something will fall into sort of a broad category. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I have a little um, uh, beef with this cultural appropriation thing, <laughs> because if if that actually came into being, nearly all the music that I love and live for would disappear because yeah. of all the, you know, that cultural cultural appropriation mm. is exactly what music is for me. It's a, mm. it's a flux. It's it's just a big recipe pot. Yeah. Let's pour some of that in, you know. Yeah. And um, it's just the uh, eclectic nature of it is, mm. is the life and soul for me, you know. Mm. No, I agree with you. I think there's, uh, I mean, it's, you know, like I mentioned, playing big band jazz, which I love doing, and I did that for five or six years every week on a, on, I had a gig with this band. Um, but I've done all sorts of other stuff as well. And I, I can't I, I can't dismiss any of that. It has a, a, an influence yeah. on what I play, and I'm sure. It, it will like influence. you were saying, Phil, about being, being a drummer, you know, you come from a different, you know, a different background of, of seeing songs in a different way as well. Yeah, and... Um, I was I was a drummer in quite a few bands, sort of in my mm. um, teens and twenties, and mm. um, yeah, you, you do listen to things differently, and I, I think it influences how you listen to music. I, yeah, I spent a long time listening really carefully to the drumming in music, mm. uh, and perhaps missing some of the other other elements because you'd be listening out to say, "Oh, that's something new. I haven't heard that before," or you know, "I like the way he used the hi hat there," or whatever it might mm. be. Whereas now, where, where I'm, I sort of class myself as a uh, a multi instrumentalist in the sense that I play lots of things badly. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you then start listening for the bass line sometimes, don't you, or the or the yeah. guitar or whatever. Because that's the beauty of music, and I think we we touched on this earlier. That it's yeah, it's in the ear of the beholder, as it were, uh, as to what you focus <laughs> on. Um, you know, and I've I've always said that lyrics are really important to me. I want to I want to have a song with lyrics that make mm. sense and and that, that, that give me something to think about, mm. but that has got to be backed up by good musicianship and, and, and a chord sequence that's fascinating or, you know, yeah. a guitar solo that, that burns your ears off or whatever it might be. Um, and, and I think Lefty's entirely right that you... Lefty's entirely right. Um, that, that's in my <laughs> sense. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you look for that in different places. So, mm. you know, there's some lovely, brilliant folk music out there, but there's some great, what I'd call indie rock music. You know, there's mm. some blues, there's jazz. You know, why would you limit yourself to going, oh, I'm a, a jazz person or I'm mm. a, you know, and I think yeah. it's true in, in songwriting as well. And, and I think the categorization thing is really difficult. So going back to the sort of, you know, putting stuff out digitally, they mm. want you to categorize yourself. They're saying, well, what kind of music is this? So we can put mm. it in a playlist with stuff that's like it and, and I would say you know some of my stuff is quite folky but some mm. of it is more you know it chimes in with people like Eels and uh, Badly Drawn mm. Boy and mm. um, you know, even sometimes things like um, uh, The Divine Comedy just because that sort of arch um, yeah. comedy, you know so about so it, it was you know it's daft I would say to try and go I'm that because yeah. you're, you're bound not to be but also yeah. why, why would you you know rule out all of this as it were yeah but it, it, it's a funny thing that you're saying about like t taking all sorts of things i mean i've never i've never been a fan of, of what people describe as world music because i think in f for me anyway my ear is not attuned to those sorts of scales and rhythms and they don't often make a lot of sense to me but bizarrely yesterday and i'll, I'll say this very quickly because it's time that lefty does his bit um i we were i got a, a traveling back from Italy. got a taxi in lille to go somewhere Got into a conversation with the taxi driver. He says, what have you been doing? I said, I've been doing some gigs in, fe in a festival in Italy, right? And he comes running after us when we get out the ta and gives me a CD. And we've been in touch ever since. And he sent me some stuff the other day. And he's, um, I don't know where he's from, but it's very Arabic sounding. I've got no idea what the lyrics are about, which is the point I'm making. But it is absolutely spellbinding. And I'm thinking, oh, God, not another MP3 for me to listen to. And I clicked on it. 
And I called Leslie up there straight away and said, have a listen to this. It's absolutely beautiful. And, and, and I can't explain to you why, but it just sort of, it just sort of drops into place somehow or other. And, and, and I think you're right. You can't be, or you shouldn't. It's not good. <laughs> I'm trying to be prescriptive here. Um, lock yourself out of anything, you know? It's, um... Anyway, over to Lefty. We, I think you see, we, you started gonna chatting. Something. We're going to say something, Hugh. Well, I could say a load of things, but I think it's. I think you know, we could we could talk. We could talk, we could talk about this stuff for, for days, couldn't we? Really? <laughs> we may well do yet. <laughs> I'll hear, I'll hear some more music. <laughs> yeah. What's What's brilliant is there's there's four guys here, and we're four of of thousands uh, who are, are being relevant. It was being passion, passionate and are still being kind of new and open to to things that that are going on. Um, it's just brilliant. It's great. Yeah. Great. It's That's why we're doing it. And still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> and still doing it, yeah. But having that love and passion for it still, you know, as if we're, you know, we're still seven years old. Brilliant. <laughs> I think I'm more enthusiastic now than I was at seven years well, old. You may not thank Saskia for that. You might not thank her for a lot of things, but you certainly got to thank her for sort of re re rekindling a lot of absolutely, absolutely. Um, these what we do. I, I'm yeah. certainly that myself. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So, uh, take it away, Lefty. I, well, yeah, this this <laughs> begins on um, what is. Looks like a 12 string, but it's only got eight strings on it because I lent it to someone many moons ago and they cracked the head, they cracked the headstock. Oh, yeah. And I never got it mended. And um, this, this was bought in 1976 in Neildon Hardy in Stockport. And um, uh, when I put eight strings on it, because it wouldn't hold, hold the tension of 12 strings, I put eight strings on it. And without thinking, had tuned it to two notes. Uh, I think it's G and D, just doubled up on G and D. Mm. Um, and I'm a sucker for a drone. I love drones. Mm. And uh, I just started messing about with it. And within about an hour, I'd written four songs because <laughs> it was a different tuning. It was I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and it, it was just nice, you know. Yeah. And I think this was the first one. This one I'm going to do now was the first one that came out from that. And um, so uh, it's a song called The Ballad of the Rich Man. And uh, he's not having a happy time of it after all his riches. So. Okay. And the rich man he talks about money and wine And the rich man he talks about land And the rich man he talks about the glitter and shine Of the jewels and the gold in his rich man's hand And the rich man he talks about castles and war and the rich man, he talks about all he has done. And the rich man, he talks about feeding the poor. The same people he took all his riches from. And the rich man tells the people to pray. Salvation will come one day. Until then they can rot, he will take all they've got To feather his rich man's display Hey! Hey, nonny nay, nonny nay Hey, nonny nay, nonny nay Hey, nonny nay, nonny nay And the 
And the rich man he talks about changing the law. And the rich man he talks about shackles and slaves. And the rich man he talks about what it's all for. But what it's all for, it's the rich man's graves. For the rich man he sucked the well dray. And nobody heard him cry. And the bones of the poor could feed him no more. And choking on his riches, the rich man died. And choking on his riches, the rich man died. And choking on his riches, the rich man died. Nanny nay, the rich man died. Hey, nanny nay, oh, the rich man died. Hey, nanny nay, nanny nay. Choking on his riches, the rich man died. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, excellent, that. Um, yeah, what was the what was the trigger for that? God knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I think um, uh, I might when I uh, oh, um, when I'm doing gigs, sometimes I'm in about four different bands and collaborations as well as my solo stuff. And um, if I have the time, I might have a gig up in Bake Up or somewhere like that. Or um, what was the other place? I can't remember the place now. And it might be somewhere I'd not been to, really. So I'll go early and have a walk around and mm. get feel for the town, you know, especially if it's, an, if it's a nice place or, or a village or something. Mm. And I'll find a cafe and I'll sit down and watch the world go by and just walk. They might have a canal or um, mm. a park or something. And I was in this place and I passed this churchyard and I looked in and it suddenly occurred to me, some of the graves um, are like, um, almost like sort of huge mausoleums, you know, mm. I'm thinking um, you'd pass that and go, ooh, that must have been an important man. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, no, he's obviously got bloody money <laughs> to afford such a thing, you know. And uh, is is that the um, the monument to their life? The fact that they just had money, mm. or, you know. Um, and so there's and there's all this thing with um, people being taken advantage of by people in power, mm. and usually, well. I'd say 99.999% of the time they're in power because they've got money. Mm. And, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Who's got a hound? <laughs> uh, uh, no, don't, don't mute the mic. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. It's, we, nice, we, it's nice having ambience. It it's, it's an animal, it. it's an animal free, animal, yeah. animal friendly, uh, broadcast yeah. this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it just came about that, and yeah. um, I, I kind of uh, invented a scene, I suppose. Mm. It's it's interesting because you know, um, yesterday I watched a documentary about the Fire Festival. Um, it's on Netflix, um, which was this thing that sort of blew up. I suppose probably two years ago, where some guy, some New York um, guy, who was an entrepreneur, had said he was going to set up this festival in the Bahamas. Um, and all these glamorous people were going to be there, and it was you could go and hire a villa or you could be on a cruise ship. Um, but it was all a con, effectively, because they hadn't got the infrastructure in place. And so when people arrived, they were just some tents that they would um, had taken from. Um, they were sort of hurricane relief tents, uh, right. effectively, that had been used in a, in a refugee camp. Um, there wasn't, you know, the running water and stuff wasn't there. Uh, some of the bands and stuff were pulled out at the last minute. But all the people who had gone, I just thought, you, I didn't feel that sorry for them in one sense because I think they'd gone because they wanted to be seen, you know, as part of this sort of glamorous thing and, and, and this sort of idea. And this guy who was at the core of it, who's now in prison, 
um, got a six-year jail sentence for um, fraud, um, which is quite right too. Um, he did not care a jot about the fact that all these Bah Bahamian um, people, if that's the right word, um, yeah. had been involved in building this infrastructure and stuff, and he not paid them. Um, so yes, the people who, who went to the concert didn't get the concert, or they went to the festival to get the concert, but the local economy was decimated by it because um, mm -hmm. all these people had been expecting, you know, they booked out all these. Uh, cafes and restaurants and uh, but it was just uh, but you know it's, that, that song just chimed with me there about the sort of mm. complete lack of care from the people at the top end of this about the you know the impact of what they did um mm. had on had on a really poor community mm. um and it was, it was quite disgusting really to watch um you know you're quite sort of pleased at the end that this guy ends up in, in prison because um you know that's he definitely deserved it because uh, it, it was a scam merchant, but it, it, it was a sort of sense of privilege, um, yeah. you know, and, and thinking I should have these things and I should be able to be in these places and be with these glamorous people. It just sort of mm. was a big turn off, really. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. And there, that does actually make you feel that there, there may be a sense, a sense of justice somewhere. For, for some things. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. Thing. Not, not enough. Not yeah. enough. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh... I, I was horrified to see the the, um, the the CEO of the Indian um, vaccine manufacturer has just agreed to take on an, a property in Mayfair at fifty thousand pound a week rent. What? There's a WTF coming out there. I just, I, you yeah. know, it's, it's obscene, isn't it? It is yeah. obscene. Yes, it is indeed. Yeah. Okay, Lefty, what else are you going to give us to give some right. deep thoughts um, about? Anyone ever been stuff. on holiday in a caravan? I have. Yeah, I've not, been, not yes. for 50 years, but... <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, uh, we had a caravan for a while. And we used to, well, we'd have to <coughs> tow it up to the um, Solway Firth and to a place called Kipford. Right. And... Um, You'd wake up in the morning and there'd be more water on the inside of the window <laughs> than um, the condensation. And, of course, being a child, the first thing you do um, is draw, draw or write it. name in it, don't you? Yeah. And when I was growing up, um, we didn't have central heating. And uh, first up made the fire. And very often, the inside of my bedroom window was covered in frost in the winter. Mm. And I loved it because, it, 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 you know how frost goes mm. on glass. It's just absolutely oh, I... gorgeous. And I used to scratch little pictures in that as well. And I started writing this particular song with those images in mind about, you know. Excellent. And the, it was one of those where the, it wasn't my intention to end up with the song I've got at all. Uh, the first three lines, um, I'd, I'd kind of set the scene, and then suddenly this thing grew out of it. It's, um, it, I suppose, it's a love, a, a lover's song. It's a love song in a way. Hmm. Uh, but it, it's interesting how um, you start. You can start on a lyric, and the lyric writes itself. It takes you off without hmm. you. It's like, whoa! I wasn't going down this road, <laughs> but so, suddenly it's there, you know, and. Um, it's a uh, it's a song called Daisy in Your Hair. Okay, so, sounds uh, good. Yeah, and it's a dad gad thing, or it's a dad f sharp gad thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's another thing. Uh, what was it say? What did they do the um, drop D. It's not a mm. drop D, is it? It's a drop E to D. Yes, it is. In fact, <laughs> it's like the thing about is if if there's an accident, is it a near miss? No, actually, it's a near hit. I yeah. think it was. I think it was Ben Elton who said that. Well, um, <laughs> so anyway, this is called a daisy in your hair.
We'd sit by the window when it rained Watching the drips fall down the pane And in the mist we would write our names But somehow alone It's not the same And the sparrows would nest in the gutters When springtime painted things green And you in my arms in the garden Were the prettiest thing I'd ever seen Oh, I'd put a daisy in your hair I wanted you to leave it there Oh, ee, ee, ee. Forever Down the hill to the river To the boathouse under the tree and there we looked into each other's eyes And there we whispered mm, Yes, please Oh, I'd put a daisy in your hair I wanted you to leave it there Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Forever. Now the rain that falls in front of me It's all that I see Looking past my own reflection Staring right back at me Oh, I'd put a daisy in I wanted you to leave it there Oh, yeah, yeah, Forever Oh, I'd put a daisy in your hair I wanted you to leave it there Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Forever. Forever. Ooh, forever. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, thank you. Right now, can you all see yourselves and, and everything else? Oh, it's back now. I don't know. I, I'm a bit disgruntled about this um, this MacBook because it's doing weird things and it's only two months old. And as with all Apple stuff, it cost me a sudden fortune. Um, lovely song, Lefty. Was thank it was, you. so? Was that was that one of the ones that no no was the, it was only the stuff on the eight string that all occurred in the same four hours, whatever it was. Was um, it, or was that a different one? So you said before that you'd retuned your guitar and you came up with four songs. Was that just on the on the eight oh, no, stroke? Yeah, it was. It was. It was right. on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the on the only the the only downside of it is with it only being tuned to two notes. Mm. Um, if I play them in succession, mm. it's a little bit samey. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It get it's. It, 
Um, so what what happened? What happens is gig in gigs. When if I'm playing live and I and I take that out with me, mm. um, I'll put them uh, at the far That's, end of each other. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Hopefully they're not recognised. <laughs> I I was doing a gig up in in Scunthorpe at the end of 2019, and for some reason halfway through um, the set, I which I I always have a set written out, and for some reason. I finished one song and I decided to start um, another song in the same key at about the same tempo. And as I did the intro, I heard somebody in the front row say, it's the same song, which it wasn't. <laughs> but it, it put me off with the first two verses because, I, I mean, you know, with blue songs, it's quite easy for the same thing to crop up. But, um, yeah, no, it's lovely. Good selection of stuff that yeah i because i mean we talked about open tunings before um was it you Hugh, that said you you never know what the what the chords are well i got a sort of vague idea but you know yeah it's I, yeah I think I'm, that... I'm in a i'm a little out in a little outfit uh that's uh based in rochdale where we've got um i'm playing the ukulele bass that we were talking about right, yeah, week, yeah. you know yeah and there's two guitars and a banjo and we're doing one of my songs that was originally um, in Dadgad. Mm. And uh, they they heard it and said, oh, yeah, it'll be good for the band, that. Let's do that. Mm. But how does it go? And exactly as Hugh said, I said, I'm not really <laughs> clue. <Yeah. laughs> I don't it know, goes I don't like know this and you play it. <laughs> so um, yeah, well, we eventually worked it out, you know. And uh, but it's very different yeah, in a... Um, a standard tuning. Yeah. There's a lovely really? story about Joni Mitchell, um, who, as you know, has a different tuning for just about every song she's written. She's written a few. Mm -hmm. And um, when 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 she started working with Tom Scott, the um, arranged yeah. sax player on the court in the spark, mm -hmm. he would hit the piano and say, well, that's a D major seven flat nine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and looked at her and expected her to say, yeah, exactly, Tom, you got that. Mm -hmm. But she didn't. She just put a hand on his arm and said, "Ignorance is bliss, Tom." <laughs> and I, and I, I, think, I think it is in some ways. It's quite liberating. It's quite liberating. Yeah. Well, the I, thing I definitely like, find. Like, Joni, sorry, I was going to say Joni Mitchell. One of the things with Joni Mitchell, which I only discovered last year, was that the reason she played an open tuning was because she had polio as a kid. And, when she, and when, when she started playing guitar, she had quite a lot of difficulty with it. And somebody explained to her how to use open tuning, and she found that an easier way to uh, to work at the beginning, but then stuck with it with wonderful results. Yeah, yeah, but it's strange. It... I worked with um, uh, a singer, uh, Risa Hall, mm. uh, for a while, and um, when it all started, it said, "Oh yeah, come on, Kev, um, we'll do some stuff together." And she sent me a load of her songs, mm. and I was so impressed. It was like, hell's teeth, these are in odd keys and weird, difficult chords. Everything was a bar chord. And then um, after a couple of weeks of this, it all went round for a rehearsal, and she tunes her guitar a whole tone down. And I didn't know. <laughs> and it was madness working the chords out. Yeah. But once, you, once I knew that, suddenly it all made sense, you know. Yeah, it's, I, I once got asked to do a session with a, a keyboard player out in Italy. I mean, the bass player went to this guy's house and um, he he didn't have anything written out. So he just sat down at the piano and, and played. And he, he, he sort of plays the first chord and you think, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm okay there. And um, But then he, he went off into something else. And what we didn't realize is that he actually played everything in the same key, but he transposed the keyboard so it went into different keys. So in the end, is me and the bass player sort of looking over his shoulder to try and work out where he was heading and trying to read off the dial at the top to see how many semitones different it was. It was frightening. And the other thing was, was that he, he had no sense of structure, so that sometimes the verse would be like, 15, 16 bars and sometimes it'll be 17 and occasionally it would be 16 and I, I realized at a certain point that that both me and Jack and with the bass player when he got to the end of the verse we were all we were both 
sort of not playing anything for the last bar to see whether that was going to be the last bar or the last but one bar or the last but two bar. Oh. But yeah, but it's fun playing with other musicians, really. <laughs> Most of the yeah, I time, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I I was going to agree with Hugh's point about freedom, though, um, mm. because I think one of the reasons I like writing stuff on the on the baritone ukulele is you can just make up chords, um, and then when you go to look up, you go, well, "What what is what is it that I'm playing?" They don't exist mm. um, sometimes, but they, you know there are I don't know a minor diminished fifth of something, um, yeah. but it actually it sounds beautiful, and that's the main thing. You kind of go, "Well, yeah. that that those chords go really well together." I don't actually know what the third one's called, um, mm. but but it still works. Um, which is, yeah, then makes it a bit more difficult when you come to record to go, well, what actually, if I'm playing other instruments, what am I playing um, yeah. to go along with that? But th I think that's, you know, it, that's a good thing in some senses because it just, that, that ignorance is bliss thing of, of actually um, not knowing what you're doing, but it sounds all right. Yeah, yeah I, I, th I think for me, I, I, I had the, the opposite experience though because like when, when I first started playing jazz and, and playing with a big band, it was, you know, it was all sharpened fifths and, inadvertent fourths and things like that and um and then when i came to, back to playing solo i wanted to know what a chord was so if i tried doing something in open tuning i think i'm like i can't i've got no idea what this chord is and i found that really frustrating and, and i'm still a bit I, I do do the drop d or drop e as i should refer to it in the future um yeah. tuning but that's I, as far I as i that with um with guitar it it does confuse me quite often when I'll be playing some chord that might be a major minor thing. Yeah. And uh, it's an inversion. And then it's like, right, well, what the hell's the root here? And which yeah. is the third? So what could, <laughs> it could either be that chord or that chord. And I'm, I'm still today, I'm not sure which one I would call it, but I think it's relative to whatever, what key you're in. Whether it becomes... Yeah, the other thing with weird... Or or uh, um, with, with weird chords, um, there's... Um, Amazing guitar player from Manchester, and I can't remember his surname. Mike, 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 Mike. fabulous jazz player. And many, many years ago, um, he's maybe five, ten years younger than me. But I went to him for for a lesson, and um, we started talking about things. And he gave me a lesson, and he didn't touch a guitar. He didn't even have a guitar in the room with him. He just talked to me about playing and explain things to me and said we'll try doing this and at one point i played a chord and it was like a a minor a minor ninth or something or other and i said um the thing with this this chord it always reminds me of, of john mclaughlin's such and such a song and he went oh, okay right he said okay so we'll just call that chord john from now on is that okay i went yeah okay <laughs> and that's how the lesson went on it was just extraordinary. Yeah. It's the only one I went for. Um, so, so guys, it's been a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Really? Thanks, thanks, thanks for taking part. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining in. Um, and thanks for your contributions. And um, Thank you, Roland, for um, making it happen. Yeah. Yeah, thank absolute you. pleasure absolute pleasure I'm, I'm sorry that adrian couldn't join us and uh, hopefully he'll be able to join us in a different session so i shall for a moment just go off and sign off to the general public however many there are and i shall be back with you shortly so yeah so um thanks um, to all of you for, for listening in i don't know how many of you there are out there there seem to be things ticking um ticking over in the top of the box so um that's our new version of um, Talking Songs. It's not a replacement. It's going to be an additional one. So I'm hoping to do this every, maybe every two weeks. Um, but in the meantime, on Tuesday, um, the normal Talking Songs will be going out at 6.30 at TalkingSongs.uk. And my guests this week are When Rivers Meet, husband and wife duo, uh, Rocky Blues outfit, fantastic players lovely people. So do come and join me. In the meantime, thanks. Look after yourself and stay safe. Bye.